good morning. I wanted to test out two new products today. So the first one is the auto stretcher. And in the description box, I will link a video sharing more about that, Mr. Otto's video. Anyways, it stretches your watercolor paper completely tight. And this will be my maiden voyage with these, testing to see if my paper stands up stretched flat um, for watercolor pouring. I'm using the Saunders Waterford paper, and I'll be testing out this brush set. This is the Escoda Nicholas Simmons set. It came with the uh, single thickness, thickness size 18 Mottler, as well as the size 16 pointed round by Escoda. In addition to those two, I added a number 16 angle shader and a number nine modeler. So I want to say that I should be able to accomplish my goals with these four brushes. We will see. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I'm excited to do this, to do this beautiful poured prairie and we'll see, um, we'll get to it. There we go. What beautiful brushes these are. Okay, so really quick, a note on the modelers. Um, really quick, we have a pointed round. So this should be your workhorse, all your round things, but since it's pointed, you should be able to get fine lines. Your angle shader brush, every video I think in this YouTube <laughs> um, library has this. I use this as um, just that a shader brush, um, washouts, blending, and then a Mottler brush holds an amazing amount of pigment and moves across the page. So that being said, I'm gonna do a quick quick sketch of this. I noticed that three quarters of the way is the sky and then we have this area of white that I want to try and keep. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of put some of those little coves in. There we go. And see that this tree starts from right up there. Go ahead and put in his trunk. And we have one that's a little bit skinnier and one that is a little bit fatter, but we're going to give them personality as we go. Um, we have our hillside here, so why don't we just pour the sky to start off with. So I'm going to start by making my sky color. I'm going to go with some French ultramarine. And I'm going to put a touch of the Prussian green in there. And why not a touch of my transparent red iron oxide. It's not a whole lot of color, but we're going to take it right down to that water line. So I'm going to go ahead and get my paper good and wet. So one of the things I don't know if these stretcher bars will work is if water will get, or paint will get trapped and then come back on itself. So that'll be really interesting if this is more of a like plain air, um, traditional painting kind of tool or if it'll work for this. Take it down a bunch and again, get a little bit more water on there so it really, really moves. And I will start at the top, let it be darkest up on top. And I will start sending it down and around. I love pouring these simple skies. Oftentimes I'll get what looks like clouds almost completely by accident. Isn't that pretty? And then if I set it on an angle, it should, you know, smooth its way down. I'm going to go ahead and mix up just a little bit more of that paint. So see how the sky color, you can see some of that in here. I think what I'll do is I'm just going to put a spot for it to come in. I want there to be that white line. 
Maybe I will enhance it just a little bit more. I can take this, I can bring it down. So I have some excess water right there. I'm just going to take a little bit of tissue. Catch it. I notice that that is mostly the blue color and it's not pulling the green. So I could just put a couple little spots of the green. Dig in this granulated sky for sure. Go ahead and let that be. Then I have this dark swatch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that color up. A little bit off camera, aren't I? There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that green color with a little bit of this transparent red oxide. Get a nice little bit more of the green. Get a nice dark green. Isn't that a nice green? And from here, I think what I'll do is I'll do another one. And I'm letting everything connect because as I paint on top of this pour is when I will start to define things a little bit more. So I just want to have this dark bit put in. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back down flat one more time dark in there. I'm not afraid of it blending up just a little bit into where in theory will be water because that might add some neat effects. And then I can just take my tissue and just barely pick up some of this. I did not intend for there to be any windows there, so I'm just going to close those. Set this back down. Put it back on the slant again. I wish you guys could see how beautiful and understated this sky is. And then we have more of like a neutral color. So for that, I'm going to take a little bit of my brown the transparent red oxide, and I'm gonna take a little bit of rose of ultramarine, and then I'm gonna swim a whole lot of the transparent, or raw sienna light, and get quite a bit of that going in there. This is a beautiful sunny golden color and with the transparent red oxide and the purple in it, we should get some fun blends. So again, I'm just gonna take it, go ahead and connect it down to the bottom, and I'm going to pour this right on top. And I'm gonna let it, you know what? I'm gonna let it pour off to right there. Not a lot to it. This will be my first pour, and it will be the um, the information that I need to get this painting started. So I'll keep this on an angle just to keep this from blending up in that way. I'm really enjoying this granulation. I'm really enjoying this board, guys. Um, the fact that this is, has zero buckles after being poured on, I would say it's a big ol' yes on the auto stretcher. Good investment. I don't know if it's too soon, I mean too late to do this or not, but I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt in here because I thought it would make for some neat texture. Just where I wanna see maybe some wildflowers or whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. Like I said, I don't know if it's too late, if there's still time for any of this, 
but why not? Because this is going to be the underbelly anyways. I'll put that on there. And I'm using um, McCormick Sea Salt. Checking back in really quick. Another thing that will happen sometimes is that when I pour it, it's still flat, but then as it starts to dry, it gets buckles. There are still a big old zero amount of buckling. So excited, tight as a drum. Look at that granulation. Ooh. <laughs> All right, very pretty. By the way, this is a great little pour if you just want something abstract, atmospheric, beautiful colors. Imagine it matted with a beautiful wooden frame. Okay, checking in guys. So um, it's almost completely dry. Still absolutely no buckles, even though I left this area super wet and dried the rest of this with a dryer to see if there would be a buckle because sometimes that'll happen too where your paper's drying unevenly and so the part that's still wet will buckle. And guess what? No buckle. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys can see this. Can you see that granulation that is happening with that sea salt? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and play some soft music and finish this painting a la prima style where I've gone ahead and I've poured my base and now I'm going to try and be creative and um, paint and or pour the rest of it but I like to play music so I can kind of be loose and free and catch a vibe and yeah I'm so excited about these boards all right let's paint
closing. I'm in love with these Escoda brushes. I wish I could have been painting with them sooner. <laughs> the auto stretcher bars are a new experience for me to paint with so much water and so taut, so you know, tight as a drum, as they would say. It no warping, no buckling. It was just a wonderful painting experience. I loved it so much. I decided to cut a long piece of paper and use the long bars of the stretcher just to stretch on the sides, and it still held the paper completely tight. So highly recommend the brushes and the stretcher bars. Links and more info will be in the description box. Thanks for watching, guys.